Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about something called the multiplication rule for probability. So multiplication rule. Multiplication rule. And let's just jump into it rather than define a bunch of things and lead up to it. Let's just go right to it. So we have two events, A and B. These are events. Okay, so different events, right? Different things. Usually you want to use this when like you're drawing two cards or you're selecting two people, you're rolling two dice. So you have two things happening, okay? And you want the probability of A and B. And you can think of these as happening in sequence, like A is happening first and, and then B is happening, okay? So the key word is and. If you have two events, right, let me write that down, two events, and you have an and, you want to think about multiplication. So again, selecting two people, taking two results. So more than one and the word and, that's the, that's the key. So this is the probability of A. And you want B to occur as well, right? So times, and means multiplied, the probability of B. But then something has already happened at this point, right? A has already occurred. So you have to denote that somehow. So what you do is you write a line. The line is read given. And then A. So the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given, again, the line is read given, A. So this is the probability that B has occurred given that A has already happened. This is the probability of B given A. So the, the line means given. This is called a conditional probability. Conditional, conditional probability. Okay. Most of the time, you don't have to really think about the formula, right? So if there's two events and there's an and, you just multiply. Don't worry about the formula. The formula is just here, uh, just as a formality. Um, sometimes events are unrelated. So like the occurrence of one event will not affect the other. Uh, those types of events are called independent events. So we say two events, A and B, are independent. Okay, this is the same thing. This is a, a biconditional arrow as saying that the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. So let me say occurrence of one does not affect the other. Does not affect the other. So a lot of definitions in one little little piece here, but I figured I would just do it this way, just jump into it. So if you have two or more events and there's an end, you just multiply. This is called a conditional probability. Two events A and B are independent if they're unrelated. So if the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. One more little theoretical thing and then we'll do an example. If A and B are independent, so if these guys are independent, then the probability of B given A. So we're looking for the probability of B given that we know something has occurred. A has already happened. That's what this means, right? The probability of B given that A has already occurred. Well, A and B are independent, so it does not matter that A has occurred. So this is just the probability of B. So what this is saying is that the formula can change, right? Sometimes you'll have the conditional probability in the formula, sometimes you won't. But again, it doesn't really matter, as you'll see in this example here. So let's say there's 100 people in a room. It's a pretty big room. And we have 60 females, 40 males. So that looks okay because uh, we have uh, 100 total, right? 60 plus 40 is, is 100, okay? Part A. Uh, so we're, we're going to select two and want the probability of two, two females. Again, the wording here is a bit sloppy. Uh, the question should say, should say, if two people will be randomly selected, what is the probability that both of them will be females, right? Because probabilities describe the future, so we always have to think about that, that future, future tense. All right, so let's do it. So I messed up because something is wrong with my brush. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that really quick. 
Uh, try this. There we go. Okay. So we want the probability that both are female. So probability both are females. So here's the thing. Whenever you see two females or both females, there is a hidden end, right? This is the probability that the first is female and the second is female. So there is a hidden end here. So now we can use the multiplication rule. You might say, well, don't you need the formula? Not really, right? So whenever you have an and, all you have to do is multiply. So you want the first one to be a female, right? So it's a fraction. So let's see, there are 60 females. So there are 60 ways to pick a female. And there are 100 people, so 100 ways to pick a person. So the probability that the first person is a female is the number of ways to pick a female over the number of ways to pick a person times. And now you have to pick another female because you want the second one to be female. However, you've taken a female out. So there's only 59 females left and there's only 99 people left. So the number goes down, right? So these are not independent events because the probabilities change. That's why the book talks about independent and stuff right now. Um, because the probability changes. So what is this going to be? I actually have no idea, uh, and I don't have a cal Well, I do have a calculator. Nope, nope, I don't. So we'll just leave it uh, like that. But you could put that in your calculator, and you would get uh, an answer. B. What if we select two? Same thing, probability of two females. But let's slightly change the question. Let's say select two with replacement. So with replacement. So what that means is you take a person and then you put the person back, then you take another person. So this number here, this 99, will be 100. And this 59 will actually be a 60, right? So let me show you. So same thing. So it would be first female and second female. So for the first female, it would be 60 ways to pick a female, 100 ways to pick a person. And the second one is female, right? Except this time, it's with replacement, so you've put someone back. So it's still 60 ways to pick a female, 100 ways to pick a person. Then you would put this in your calculator, and, and you would get uh, the answer. So uh, the default is without replacement. So up here, this is without replacement. That is the default. All right, that's it.